Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing, and I'm going to discuss a two-day severe weather threat that's going to begin this evening across south-central Kansas, spreading into northeastern Kansas, possibly as far north as the I-70 corridor. Those supercells are going to develop at around 7 p.m., maybe a little bit closer to sunset, maybe just after sunset as well. There is pretty stout capping uh, at the low levels. That's a warm layer of air just above the ground that acts as a lid on the atmosphere, preventing that convection from initiating. But then I do expect late night tonight, uh, closer to midnight, supercells developing along a warm front that's going to lift through central Missouri into central Illinois, eventually making it up into northern Illinois, possibly near the Wisconsin border by Saturday. But as that front lifts north overnight tonight, late night, I do expect supercells, possibly surface-based, likely elevated with an isolated tornado threat lifting north through central Illinois, maybe even a little bit north of there. And then on Saturday, that's when I expect that strong tornado threat across northwestern Illinois into eastern Iowa, possibly extreme southern Wisconsin as well. It looks like a very strongly sheared environment as this Colorado low ejects off to the northeast. A very intense synoptic system with a lot of kinematics, a strong low-level jet, fast storm motions as well. These are going to be moving probably 40, 50 miles an hour uh, to the northeast, so they're going to be very difficult to keep up with if you are chasing out there. The Storm Prediction Center has upgraded to a moderate risk already across northwestern Illinois, including the threat for those strong tornadoes. Here is that outline of the strong tornadoes across northwestern Illinois into far eastern Iowa. It's that hatch area that we so often talk about for strong tornadoes into even far northeastern Illinois. And you can see that there also is a tornado threat extending down into Dixie Alley, even just east of the Mississippi River Valley there. Uh, this 5% tornado probability extends into the Ohio River Valley, a large section of northeastern uh, Missouri as well, but this is that strong tornado threat across northern Illinois that we're going to be watching for Saturday as that intense mid-latitude cyclone ejects from southwest to northeast toward the Great Lakes. I'm going to show that whole entire process using the forecast models right now. First, let's look at the upper, uh, the upper levels. You can see a slight positively tilted trough. This is the trough axis right here. A lot of flow on the southeastern side of that trough. That's creating vor positive vorticity advection downstream of the mountains and that's leading to Lee cyclogenesis. This is a textbook Colorado low. There you can see that low beginning to form this morning. It's only about a thousand millibars, but then as you step forward three hours, still a thousand millibars. Stepping forward another three hours to 18Z, the low really starts to drop there right over the Denver area. Now let's take this another six hours forward close to zero Z. And there you can see that low really starting to bottom out. The HRRR has it at 992 millibars in far western Kansas this evening. And uh, the late arrival of this upper level system is the reason why storms aren't going to initiate until near, maybe just after sunset across southeastern Kansas, uh, right in the leading edge of that jet streak. Once that positive vorticity evection begins to spread over the area, that's going to cause supercell initiation. It's possible that they could be elevated a little bit further north, closer to the I-70 corridor, but there could be some surface-based supercells with a tornado threat far southern Kansas, maybe even northern Oklahoma, as that system ejects. But look at the low. Definitely an intense low that's beginning to move away from Colorado late night tonight. And that's why there's not going to be a huge amount of snow in the Denver area, or the, especially the Colorado foothills. Looks like several inches of snow in the Colorado foothills to the west of Colorado, but it's because this low ejects, and you have more of a northerly component here across Denver, that's going to minimize the upslope component. And with that system ejecting to the northeast, quickly moving away from the high plains, that eliminates that upslope component. This is at 12Z, so Saturday morning, the surface low is still intensifying. Uh, the warm front will be lifting through Illinois uh, by this time. Eventually, it's going to become situated up near uh, the Wisconsin-Illinois border. But I wanted to show you the evolution of this surface low, just a textbook Colorado low. This is at 18Z on Saturday, still an intensifying low into the upper 980s uh, uh, near the Omaha area. By Saturday, midday, you've got a warm front extending through Iowa into northern Illinois. And this is going to eject after midday. But I expect supercells, tornadic supercells, to be ongoing by this time, noon to 1, uh, across central and eastern Iowa, possibly into northwestern Illinois as well as this system ejects. There's going to be multiple waves of supercells from this, but it certainly is going to be an early show. 
I bet there's going to be tornadoes in progress in central and southeastern Iowa here, maybe northeastern Missouri, and those are going to march in to western Illinois uh, by Saturday. Let's look at the upper levels again. This is 500, the mid-levels, and it still has a similar shape as it, as it does this morning, except that it's more potent. You can see that there are a lot more uh, 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 geopotential height uh, contours here around this. It's more of a bowling ball shape. Definitely is a compact Vortmax, and that's why you still have uh, very intense. The, the surface low is still dropping at this time because it still does look like a bit of an open wave. There's still positive vorticity advection. You can see a lot of flow in the southeastern quadrant of this system, overspreading the warm sector across uh, uh, eastern Iowa here, northeastern Missouri, into western Illinois. I would say that this is going to be a potential tornado outbreak type of a scenario as well. And the 12Z HRRR is just now coming out. This is Saturday morning at 13Z. Let's compare that to the 6Z run of the rock. There's the 6Z run. Now let's look at the 12Z run. And it does look to be just a little bit slower in this latest HRRR run. I think that that could even bring central and eastern Iowa more into play than the current moderate risk is showing for that day two outlook uh, based on these upper levels. But again, the 12Z models are just starting to come out. And this is at 0Z on Saturday. The upper level system is still intensifying, still deepening. And this is why I think that that warm front could lift up into southern Wisconsin. This is a very potent system. So usually when you want to hedge away from the models, you'd want to anticipate that that warm front is going to lift further north into southern Wisconsin with such a dynamic uh, mid-latitude cyclone in the upper 980s here in northern uh, Iowa uh, by Saturday evening, this warm front's going to lift up into southern Wisconsin. So let's look just a little bit earlier. This is closer to 21Z. This is the NAM. I had to cycle back to the NAM here. I want to show the dew points lifting north. You could definitely see the, the, the very obvious warm front across northern Illinois. And this is using the Pivotal Weather website here to visualize these models. Look at that sharp warm front, and this is at 18Z. Uh, so this is at 1 p.m. The warm front, at least according to the NAM, is going to be just right along the Iowa-Missouri border into northwestern Illinois, just to the north of the Peoria area. Chicago, you've got dew points in the 40s. You're likely going to be saved by the lake. Usually you get some stabilizing air off the very cold lake waters that will prevent that warm front from lifting north around uh, the Great Lakes. But this is at 18Z, and look at the low-level jet here at 850 ahead of this dynamic upper-level storm system. The core of the low-level jet at this time is across central and western Iowa. That's going to move off to the east. This is at 18Z. Let's look at 21Z. And the core of that low-level jet is in eastern Iowa, according to the 6Z NAM. It is going to be moving into northwestern Illinois, too, after this time period. But this is at 4 p.m. You've even got a 60, near 70-knot low-level jet just to the east of this 850 low. So I'm thinking that Iowa, the eastern part of Iowa, is going to be majorly in play for this tornado event, possibly even a substantial tornado outbreak. Let's pull out the photographs. And even though this is north of the warm front, you can see a massive looping photograph there. Let's see where the uh, warm front is at 21Z, according to the NAM. The warm front is just over southeastern Iowa at about 4 p.m., but I bet it's going to be lifting more rapidly northward. There is going to be quite a bit of convection along this warm front that we've already noted late night tonight through early Saturday morning that could impede the pro progress of this, surf of this warm front. But because the surface low is so dynamic and so intense and you've got a 70-knot low-level jet, that I expect this warm front to lift rapidly northward, probably more rapidly than is being shown uh, by this current forecast of the NAM. You've got a 989 surface low there, big southeasterlies to the north of that warm front, shifting over to southwesterly, uh, basically like a pseudo dry line pivoted on an axis there. And now let's step forward to 0Z, and let's see where that warm front is located according to the NAM at 0Z. We'll look at the uh, energy helicity index to depict that. And by this time, the warm front 
is in uh, northern Colorado or in northern uh, Illinois. It is still lifting to the north at this time. You can see it's not going. Uh, the, the forecast models are not showing that warm front lifting in to the Chicago area. There's a lot of stabilizing cool air off of the very cold waters of uh, Lake Michigan. But let's cherry pick a uh, forecast sounding right in the middle of that bullseye. That's probably near the Peoria area, in northern Illinois. This is at zero Z. Fast storm motions out here at 60 knots. These things are going to be flying multiple fast moving supercells as well wave after wave coming off that surface low into this strongly sheared environment you've got a low level jet here of 60 knots big time low level jet uh, uh there Th this is a textbook outbreak type of a hodograph that we're looking at here uh, you've got very strong mid and upper level winds in excess of 70 to 80 knots there that are contributing to that big time storm motion the low level jet near 60 knots very strong one two three kilometer winds uh, surface wind much weaker between 10 and 20 knots and even backed out of the south southeast near that warm front they're going to be even more backed uh, so as these supercells race toward that warm front at 60 miles an hour they're likely going to produce a few tornadoes you'll have to bounce back south to the next storm coming up and then as they approach that warm frontal zone they'll likely tornado before they reach it because of such a strong surface low i do expect the winds to back even south of that warm front and there's going to be a tornado threat well to the south as well and look at the directional shear in the low levels uh, going from south southeast up to south southwest at about 60 knots and then these big time upper level winds contributing to very rapid storm motions elevated mix layer is quite high just above 500 uh, millibars there but definitely stout and look at all this cape all this area here between the environmental temperature and that parcel temperature very steep lapse rates being contributed by this drying air there uh, with that elevated mix layer Let's see if the new uh, h triple r is out for this time yet and it is and this is at 18 z so not surprisingly as i mentioned the warm front is going to be further north by midday up here in eastern Iowa. I think southeastern Iowa is certainly going to be in play. They're going to have arcs of supercells ripping off of this uh, nor northwest to southeast oriented boundary here. Dry line basically with southwesterly winds to, and drying to the southwest of it. Moisture getting wrapped up from the southeast out ahead of this intense surface low. It's going to be in the upper 980s there across western Iowa. Uh, definitely a bullseye in the parameter space across northwestern Illinois in the vicinity of Peoria, even at 18Z. Let's look at a sounding here. You've got PDS tornado soundings all over the place across northwestern Illinois into eastern Iowa. Big time cape here. This is crazy. Cape, uh, a lot of directional shear, speed shear. You do have a little bit of veer back veer, but it's such a dynamic system that these long shear vectors, you're going to have the low level jet intensifying after 18Z above 50 knots. And that's going to more than compensate for any negative contribution to the helicity by these little veer back veer uh, type of kinks. Critical angle, uh, higher 60 degrees in this. Uh, that's because it shows a more backed low level jet in this sounding. Let's uh, pick a, a sounding up in the arc in eastern Iowa. And you have a little bit of a less of a veer back veer closer to the east side of that low. All kinds of little dry slots punching in at the mid levels of the atmosphere, contributing to this big cape. This is a very dynamic system. There's going to be tornadoes in this arc here across uh, eastern Iowa as well into northwestern Illinois. This is still the 16, 16Z HRRR. Let's step forward now. This is at 17Z. So. The latest H triple R is a little bit slower and a little bit deeper with that upper level system, so it's definitely going to bring in central Iowa into play, central and eastern Iowa. Eventually, a little bit of a later show into northwestern Illinois, mid to late afternoon, type of a strong tornado threat. Uh, but already by 17Z, this is at noon, you've already got favorable hodographs for tornadoes across central and eastern Iowa. Definitely want to target the southeastern quadrant of Iowa and then move in to northwestern Illinois for this setup. Let's see if there's any storms uh, already going up at midday. Got these are elevated storms. It's possible that storm could be surface based there already in northeastern Missouri. Let's look at the energy helicity index here. So yeah, these storms that are initiating in southeastern Iowa by midday and moving into western Illinois are likely going to be the first round of tornadic supercells. There's even going to be a more substantial round developing along this arc uh, by early to mid-afternoon as well. So you're going to have wave after wave of these tornadic supercells moving into this environment. 
and that's right on the nose of that stronger low-level jet core. But closer to mid-afternoon, you're going to see a big ramp up across southeastern Iowa and that low-level jet intensifying, intensifying above 50 to 60 knots there on Saturday. But I do think it's also important to look at today, this evening, despite the late arrival of that upper level energy, it does look like there's going to be supercells that will initiate after 0Z, 8 or 9 p.m. in south central Kansas, possibly near the Wichita area there. But the slower the slower evolution of the upper level system that's being depicted by the new runs of the HRRR and the overnight runs of the NAM and the 12Z run of the NAM may decrease the chance for daytime supercells just before sunset across southeastern Kansas. This is uh, this evening, but by 0Z at 7 p.m., you can still see the low-level jet has yet to really kick up in the warm sector to the east of the dry line. The southwesterlies are starting to increase to the west of the dry line at 0Z. But then stepping forward to 9 p.m., you finally start to get that low-level jet response as that upper-level system ejects and as you're getting uh, lee cyclogenesis across the high plains of Colorado. Looking at about 10 p.m., you still get a, a greater increase in that low-level jet. So if there are any surface-based storms that are going around 9 or 10 o'clock, which the HRRR is showing in far south-central Kansas, and these will have an isolated tornado threat as that low-level jet increases, but then look at this, the late night development of those supercells along the warm front near the I-70 corridor in Missouri, uh, that in, uh, basically uh, near just to the south of the Kansas City area, Columbia, over to St. Louis, maybe just north. This is along that warm front, the late night supercell mode that I was talking about. And the models are showing that just a bit further north across northern Missouri into west central Illinois tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see some late night tornado warnings with this stuff as that warm front is lifting off to the north. Also here across eastern Kansas, Kansas, there could be some late night tornado warnings as well. So definitely a two day severe weather event that is beginning this evening, continuing overnight tonight, and then that strong tornado threat across southeastern Iowa into northwestern Illinois. Those are the events uh, that I'll be watching very closely. Uh, this is a live update i am from my sister's basement here uh, breaking down this severe weather event and um, i do think that there's going to be a pretty substantial severe weather outbreak tonight tomorrow but the, the threat for the strong tornadoes is most substantial across northwestern illinois into central even southeastern iowa maybe northeastern missouri saturday beginning as early as midday so stay safe, everybody out there. Uh, this is a severe weather breakdown. I do think that the long range is showing a, a bit of a quiet, more quiet pattern after this uh, mid-latitude cyclone, but this one is probably gonna have a strong tornado threat across that target area that I mentioned. One more time, here are those target areas. Isolated supercells this evening across south central Kansas, spreading into eastern Kansas. Late night supercells should be a little bit further north in this red area, closer to the I-70 corridor from Kansas City uh, to the north of St. Louis up toward the Springfield area. And then that purple zone, that's where the strong tornado potential is. And I probably should bring that a little bit further west, uh, just to the east of Des Moines there, based on the slower solution of that HRRR. So thank you everybody. Sorry I wasn't able to stream this live. I had some technical difficulties uh, this morning. I'd like to thank the Facebook supporters for making live storm chasing and these live severe weather briefings possible. Please be sure to check out our Facebook supporter community. We do a lot of these daily severe weather briefings, breaking down photographs and the meteorology of these setups. Stay tuned to those watches and warnings in these target areas. Keep uh, stay, stay physically distant and uh, we'll get through this difficult time period with severe weather ramping up in the middle of this substantial coronavirus pandemic.